Chubby. We have to care about the agents. <laughs> Attention, consistency, yeah. authenticity. Yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. I am back in St. Augustine, sitting here with uh, DC, Dylan Clark. Dylan, thanks for coming on, brother. We've been trying to make it happen, um, but y'all are busy, man. Yeah. Y'all are busy. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure, you know. Um, try to stay as busy as I can, you know, staying in touch with as many people as I can. And that's the name you know, of the game. Helping them out. Um, we were. Oh, sick. So Dylan is tall. <laughs> do the bottom one. Do the bottom one. Where it's I, not... I moved my chair down a little bit. Yeah. Too, did that so help? We can kind of be on plane. That you're looking at me over there, by the way. Click. I'm saying hit the up. I, I can see the back of the camera. Oh. That's honestly kind of funny, though. You were recording the shot. It's cut, cut up. over. Yeah, we're like... going to use it. <laughs> you totally should have done it live. Like, while we're, were you still recording? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's great news. So, All right. so keep going. <laughs> right. So now that we can see Dylan's face, we're back in St. Augustine with Dylan Clark. Uh, let's try it again. But, um, yeah, man, y'all are busy. I mean, we were talking earlier about some big closings. Um, Josh Cabana just had a monster on the beach. Uh, and you are also have a dog in the fight with a pretty, 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 pretty big closing uh, that happened up in Palencia, um, just a stone's throw away. Um, we'll get into that in a minute, but let's kind of hear about where you're from, how you got into real estate, et cetera. We had mentioned scholarship earlier uh, off camera. So kind of like clue us in on, you know, on a little bit of that. Yeah. So, I mean, I absolutely love real estate. My experience in it, you know, is, is boundless. I've been living in a house all my life. So okay, good <laughs> start. know quite a bit about it. Good start. I had, um, I had always kind of been intrigued with it growing up. It was not something that, you know, my parents were in or anything like that. Basically, you know, what I had known about it was just the realtors that I saw on TV. But, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Once I had, you know, kind of started to get into college and got my business degree from our shared alma mater, Flagler yeah, College. Flagler. Um, Shout I out realized Flagler. That, yeah, I wanted to kind of do my own thing with business. You know, I really saw it as a, a great time to take an opportunity to really, you know, take my life into my own hands and kind of, you know, play quarterback of, you know, my own job decisions and life decisions. Right. I, I dig to. that. Uh, are you from Florida? Yeah. So actually, Florida, born and raised. Love um, that. I'm a Florida boy. I, I grew up in Central Florida, out of Lake Mary. All right. I know it well. I've yeah. played ball uh, all throughout the state, so I think we played uh, played a college up there, up and around there. Se Seminole Community College, is that kind of mm -hmm. like in that area? Yeah, yeah, right up the street. Yeah, exactly. So slightly familiar. Um, so obviously what brought you here is college mm -hmm. to St. Augustine here. Um, did you play uh, ball in college? Yeah, so I actually started off my freshman and sophomore year, I played for the inaugural lacrosse team. At hey, College. nice. So yeah, they were just kind of getting that program up and running. We had gotten some some great talent out of high school, including myself. And our coach was actually an offensive coordinator for a professional lacrosse team. So it was okay. great to kind of go there, move from such a good program. I just saw that uh, that new field over there is pretty badass. Yeah, we didn't have that, you know, back in my day. But now that the team is full NCAA, well, yeah, and I haven't been over there in a minute. I just pass it on Old Moultrie. But is the practice the practice baseball field still there or that's where they I think they built it on top of it They've okay so that that's where that. that that area is yeah right. I know it's I mean it's a beautiful beautiful I think it's all turf mm -hmm. the lights are brand new um but that's cool I didn't I didn't know that uh that you're freaking lax bro dude yeah <laughs> kind of that that natural you know beef between lacrosse and baseball players, well yeah you know? I mean because everyone's a hothead it would be like lax bros <laughs> and hockey but we don't have ice hockey here but like hockey and lax bros would have beef because everybody's just a bro they're just hotheads yeah. you know um, <laughs> everybody's hamming it up but uh mm -hmm. that's pretty wild so you were a scholarship recipient what were you doing before you were in our scholarship program so actually you know as I was finishing out my years 
years at, at Flagler College. Okay. I was still interning with a marketing company that did, you know, local Google marketing. I dig it. So as I graduated, I felt like gravitating away from that. I took a couple months off to kind of recenter myself, you know, the uh, last summer, if yeah. you will, and just kind of jumped right in on, on real estate as soon as I, you know, had the chance to get my license. Awesome. How long did it kind of take you to get through that licensing process and get on with us here? Yeah, so I actually started the licensing process um, after I had spoken with Megan here on the team, our recruiter back at that time, and um, she really inspired me to get into real estate, the structure that they had built here on the team. It, it took me just under, you know, two weeks to go ahead and get that course finished up, and then I had, you know, the... Um, the test just a week later because I had, you know, registered with the DBR beforehand and that wow. great advice from Megan really helped out. Yeah. That's, uh, that's one thing that our growth advisor team um, does really, really well is make sure that you are moving along properly. Like you're not getting kind of like stuck in a hole. And if you are getting stuck, you know, they're doing anything they can to help you out, yep. whether it be just trying to get anything else out of the way. So it mean, Hey, this is our last checkpoint. So when this does happen, you're ready to roll. Um, cause obviously there, you know, there are things like that, that are out of their hands, but for the most part, that's something they do really, really well is to, uh, to make sure that you have all the tools, all the things kind of in place, Ashley, even, you know, helping out with, uh, LLC work and making sure all these things are done. Uh, I think that's a huge value because yeah, I mean, f coming fresh out of college, like you don't, you know, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Not a lot of people starting <laughs> a, a small business, you know, right after no, getting yeah. their diploma. So that structure, you know, like I mentioned before, and I, I really realized that this was going to be the best opportunity for myself to kind of put myself under an umbrella that had already seen so much success and kind of grow my business and, and design it and work it the way that I wanted to, mm -hmm. um, you know, to really help out the customer at the highest level. Yeah. I mean, and just starting a business too at, you know, the age of 22, 23, 24 years old is already super obviously daunting, discouraging, right? Like again, you just don't know what you're doing. So to have the guidance that you're you know, given here is, is pretty remarkable. Like, uh, I say that all the time. I mean, even coming from a creative standpoint, marketing standpoint, um, the tools that I were just given, there was like limitless, basically anything I needed, right. you know, uh, was provided for me. If I said I needed this or like, oh, okay, you need it. Like we, you know, we trust your judgment. Um, talking about this big closing that just happened recently. Um, we're at, let's, I'll let you just, disclose the the final sale price yeah so it was a monumental sale for me we actually ended up closing at just a hair under one and a half million dollars um yes. it was originally listed at 1.7 so to get my customers such a tremendous deal and yes that was that was absolutely huge for me and yeah up in a beautiful community right along the golf course they have uh i think there's a lake up there too in palencia yeah absolutely beautiful nice little town center there too um but i think it's pretty important to note that these people weren't walking around this house 300 times before you bought it. That's right. Yeah. So I had actually had the privilege of meeting up with them a couple times in their trips down to St. Augustine. Um, the homes and communities that we saw and explored before then, you know, just hadn't really done it for them. So once we locked in on Palencia, they felt comfortable enough to, you know, kind of operate things up in Massachusetts and trust me as their boots on the ground down here to make sure that I was looking out for their best interest. So they pulled the trigger on this thing, one and a half mil sight unseen. Yeah. They actually went under contract and completely closed before even setting foot in the house in the house so wow talk about doing proper service and really making them feel like they were inside this home that's right yeah that's pretty wild um got a couple of other big ones in the works we don't really like to mention them because we don't want to jinx them fingers crossed but we just put our head down and we'll hear about those when those close you that's know right. um but what are we looking towards towards you know 2023 as we kind of round out 2022 what are some of our goals kind of headed into the new year yeah so, I mean, it, it's really a great time of year to kind of start reflecting, you know, because we've had so much time to develop our business and kind of grow into the shifting market a bit more. There's definitely, you know, a lot of things that I'm looking into that, you know, I'm going to have to do next year that just really won't, you know, keep those same you know, numbers going from, from last year. So definitely going to have to dig in a lot more with the customer make sure that, you know, they can trust me. They feel comfortable, you know, big doing time. everything. Yeah. Big time. I, I think that's a big thing as the market, you know, turned, um, a lot of people where they were biting off more than they can chew and then just making it happen after the fact. I think now it's the full-time realtor who's dedicated to the customer is we're going to really start to see that separation between the, 
half ins and all in people. Um, unfortunately, you know, because a lot of people did get into COVID during the gold rush, you know, get into real estate, excuse me, during COVID, during the gold rush, um, and probably did pretty well, yeah. you know, get, getting by doing maybe, you know, some of the work, some of the bigger things, but now once all the work is not met, I think that's when the separation is really going to start to happen, you know, and unfortunately that comes at, you know, the, the, I don't even know the de- demise that the unfortunateness of the expense, the expense. Yeah. I like that. The expense of some people's careers and lives, but it also could be a great blessing, wake up call, you know, whatever. I mean, just like, you know, real estate and you changing your plan, Yeah, you know, during COVID. And it, it's definitely really difficult to see because, you know, a lot of people were banking on, you know, doing amazing in real estate and jumping right in just because they knew that the market was hot. But, right. you know, at the end of the day, what's number one is really, you know, how can you best serve the consumer? Yeah. And, you know, if you're going at this, you know, at part time, you maybe have another job that you're focusing on a little bit more, you know, you really just can't serve the consumer at that high level. No, you're totally right. I mean, that's what we were talking. uh, And I always say this, I'm like, every time I walk into this office, the discussion in here is crazy. You know, you think you're going to hear, you know, oh, who, you know, did anybody see this in the Grammy Awards or, you know, football or baseball, whatever it is. And it's usually just like, yo, anybody else see this house on the island just hit? Blah, blah, blah. It's like <laughs> all housing all the time. Like, yeah, there is some of that culture here where, you know, everybody is, you know, a part of everybody else's lives. But for the most part, it's really, it's work. I mean, it's like you guys work really, really hard. And I think you guys learn a lot. I mean, we're talking, you're on, 11 transactions already. So it's like, that's crazy that, you know, you're essentially getting what the same experience and the same amount of volume and transactions that a veteran real estate agent would hope to close in a normal year. You're already there as like a young pup. I mean, how, how how does that give you confidence in order to move forward in business and say, wow, you know, what I am doing is, is, is right. Or like, you know, man, I, I got to pick up my game. Yeah. And what's great about real estate is, you know, you never really can count your chickens until they hatch. You For know, sure. You want to make sure that, you know, you're servicing the customer from, you know, that first phone call all the way until, you know, them being closed. Thankfully, we have a great team of transaction coordinators that, you know, give us an extra set of eyes right. on, on every single transaction. But, you know, when we're dealing something as personal as, you know, the largest or second largest purchase that a family might make in their lives, you know, it's really important to be able to stay on top of it, you know, not just five days a week from nine to five. Right. And, you know, any great any great business owner will tell you that, you know, you have to be able to go beyond those limits and, you know, connect with people and kind of meet them where they're at. Right. How awesome is it or how much have you leaned on leadership in especially a one and a half million dollar transaction, but just over the time of you being here over those 11 transactions? I mean, an absolute ton. And and right as I was first starting out too, you know, there was a lot of late night texts, early morning calls, things like that, where, you know, they make themselves available to us. And, you know, each one of them kind of has their own, you know, take on on real estate and, and things to offer. You know, Brittany and Brett are both, you know, tried and tested, you know, agents. And, and Travis has been, you know, the captain of the TC room for right. I don't even know how many years now and, and how many thousands of transactions, you know, that he's had a hand in. So, right. How, uh, how hard do you lean on your TC? Um, Alaska is absolutely fantastic. You know, I try to lean on her as much as I can. It's, it's really a team effort when, you know, you're managing so many different sides to a transaction. It's not always just, right. you know, the buyers in the house, there's title, there's the lender, there's the sellers, there's a the listing agent. So there's a lot of balls in the air and, you know, it always helps to have that extra set of eyes or set of hands. Right. I mean, you got to think about it. You know, you're working with all these people as your business partners. I mean, how, how important is it, especially someone as young as you, have as much on the table and to risk as much as obviously, you know, you have to trust those partners. I mean, it's absolutely huge. And and it can be difficult for me too. I've always been someone, you know, I grew up an only child as well. So I was always kind of, you know, taking on the effort for things, you know, kind of putting it all on myself. Hard to share things because no one to share with. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's been kind of uh, difficult or definitely, you know, an adjustment, I would say, to kind of pass off some of those responsibilities. But, you know, in the amount of transactions that I did, you know, last year and this year, I've really built a great relationship with them and, you know, they haven't let me down. That's fantastic. Um, So we got any vacations planned? I mean, what what are we doing here? And, and, you know, we're rounding out kind of the year. Uh, We're going into 
uh, Christmas parties in a few months, you know, what, uh, what's, how are you going to celebrate and how are you going to prepare for 2023? Are you doing anything different? Are you doing, you know, doing any more education, training, et cetera? Yeah. So definitely going to be ramping up my business as much as I can um, on social media, because, you know, as we've seen, that's really been the biggest promoter of, you know, lead sources as we see, you know, TikTok, things like that, right. you know, growing into it. It's also a great tool to just showcase who you are. Right. I feel like people, when you're talking to these people blindly on the phone, you know, they don't know who you are and you're, you know, you send them over your video text or whatever it is. Hey, face of the name, but like building your online presence lets people kind of into your, your world a little bit so that they kind of know Dylan Clark before they meet you. Yeah. And that's another great point. You know, something that I've done up to this point is posting a lot of my success stories, buyers that I've helped, you know, homes that I've closed, but also, you know, introducing that mix into social media of like, right. you know, this is kind of what I do big time with the few hours that I have, you know, when I'm not a hundred percent enveloped in yeah. you know real estate. Yeah. Big time. I think that's a big thing that people get, misconstrued is this the word i should have a disc a dictionary or thesaurus <laughs> on hand or something i think you hit that one right <laughs> yeah misconstrued where social media is it's a great tool for leads that's great rarely are people just scrolling on instagram or like oh dylan's a real estate agent i'm gonna have him buy a house but it's the business that you are already involved in, the people you're already dealing with, all the opportunities that come in here, it's a great look into them getting to know more about you, more about your personal life, other successes that you've had in real estate. Yeah, 100%. Great tool for them to learn all that if it means something to them, right? Like think about if that means absolutely nothing to you and you're like, you know, I have 30,000 followers on Instagram. Somebody could look at you and be like, I don't even know what that is. Rarely do I think that would happen, but right. I'm saying that could not mean anything to them. And here you are standing on your high horse, you know, touting that and it doesn't mean anything. So like, okay, what well now what's your plan? Like right. yours is already founded on providing such a high level of service. That's going to ring with anybody, right? Mm. And right. also great with social medias too, where a lot of people, like you said, they're not just scrolling through and be like, oh, like he's, you know, agent, you know, let's buy, I got to buy a house now. But the same thing like Brett did in the morning huddle the other day talking about like when you walk into your department store, there's always somebody there at the front saying, hey, can I help you? Right. And you always tell them no. But the second you're ready, you look around for the most close, the closest person around you to be like, hey, I need help with something. You're just saying front yeah. face, face of mind, whatever yeah. that saying is to yeah. know that like, oh, yeah, Dylan's the guy. X, yeah. Y, just yeah. like Matt was saying, you know, it's been taught from day one, you know, through Tom Ferry, we, we like to stay Tom. We like to stay top of mind. Yeah. That way, you know, we're constantly in front of, you know, all the people that, you know, could possibly buy or, or may buy in the future. Right. And, you know, it's just an absolute gift to be able to, you know, help people on such a high level. Quick shout out before we uh, wrap up, you, we did uh, the best in biz competition. You uh, had, had a great run. I did. Yeah, yeah. You had a really awesome <laughs> run. That was, I mean, being a former athlete, obviously competitiveness is just built into you. Yes. Um, how were you, how did you, what did you learn from that competition and how did you prepare going into it knowing that quick digression backstory, we had a competition and the topic was always randomly chosen that morning, like mm -hmm. right before the bout, so to speak happened right, right before the thing happened. So Back to it. Yeah. How did you kind of prepare knowing that you had no clue what the topic was going to be, but you had to stay sharp. You were listening to other people talk to along the mm -hmm. course of the competition, kind of like walk us through a little bit of that. Yeah. So, I mean, first of all, I mean, it, it's really great to be able to show up every day, you know, be surrounded by like-minded individuals and professionals that, you know, know how to talk real estate, handle these objections and, you know, help people. So, you know, just, just standing around and, and watching other people kind of do that best in the biz battle, watching them do that. But also, you know, the limitless resources that are online and in our hands, you know, with our phones, like listening to podcasts, listening to books and stuff while I'm writing to showings that help me to kind of, right. you know, shift my paradigm a little bit on a few of the different, you know, scenarios and kind of attack it a different way that helped me to, you know, kind of take, take out some of my um, more mature and more experienced competitors just by, you know, bringing something new, a little wild card to the table. Right. Well, and just staying the course, right? Like not trying to step into something that you're like, I have no clue what I'm talking about, but I'm just like, I'm going to talk about what I know. I'm going to service this person the best I can. And I'm, um, you know, the knowledge that I have, I'm constantly obviously trying to gain more knowledge, but like, let's just speak to what I know, because when you speak to what you know, it's really hard to sound like you have no clue what you're talking about. Right. A lot of people are a fake it till you make it situation. But for the most part, it's like, if you're just going on and on and on and 
it's going to become very apparent inside of a house, talking about price points, talking about other things, even an area. Right. You're going to be like, are you are you sure you service this area? Right? Because for the most part, if you are just upfront and honest, it's not going to be a weird conversation. Be like, hey, I'm not an expert in that area, but I am going to find out everything because I know this means this to you, and I'm dedicated to doing that. And maybe sometimes – it is a little push, right? You're waiting for people. Like, maybe you didn't know everything about Palencia, but once these people saw this house, they're like, Dylan, we love this home. You're mm-hmm. like, I'm going to find out everything about Palencia. So when they have questions for me, I'll be able to answer them like white on rice. Yeah. And I mean, preparation is, is absolutely key. So, you know, anyone that I talk to about, about getting into real estate, I always let them know that, you know, it, it's a full-time job. And Big time. while it is sales, you really can't look at it as being a salesman or a saleswoman. You know, you really have to just, you know, get out there and be a real person. And, mm-hmm. you know, trust is, is super big. And especially when, you know, you're talking to someone on the phone that, you know, may have just randomly clicked on Zillow and now you're giving them a call. You know, it can be tough to kind of go from, you know, that ground level to a level of trust where, you know, you're trusting someone with hundreds of thousands of, of dollars. and Right. This time that you've, you know, worked for a lot of people moving to Florida, it's been their retirement dream for, you know, some 30, 40 years they've been working for that. So to kind of put that into my hands and, you know, know that people are trusting me, it's a, it's a lot to take on. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a huge honor too, right. To, to have that trust, but it's also Definitely. a huge hill to come up and over and earn that trust. So, um, yeah, I, that's, I mean, that's spectacular. I love hearing the success, obviously huge congrats on that big, big closing, many more to Thank come. You, um, we love you here, man. Just keep grinding, keep doing it. You know, athletes always do well here. Um, service industry people always do well here because they get it right. They just yeah. understand that it's like, Hey, it's not about me. It's about the team and it's about the customer. That's right. And I think that's the best way. Um, I think that's kind of like the new age real estate. I think that's, that's who the new real estate agents, uh, that you're going to start to see is going to be those people, right? It's not the selfish agent, you know, that's just like, Oh, it's all about me. It's all about me. It's like, no, I'm a part of a team. I'm part of something bigger. Yeah. And it's all for, you know, the consumer. And just the, answer your phone before you even look at the number, before you even look at the name, you know, pick it up, be available answer, for people. <laughs> best advice I could give an agent, answer your phone. That's right. Love it. Well, we appreciate you, brother. Thank, Thank you, you very Todd. much. Before we wrap up, Dylan mentioned that he listens to podcasts and stuff in the car and books. It's because he probably listens to Audible. This podcast is sponsored by Audible. Audible is a great way for you to listen to books instead of reading them because you're in the car on your way to showings, but you want to level up your knowledge. Um, Matt will put the uh, link in the description, but I believe it is audibletrial.com forward slash DJ and Lindsay. You can head over there and uh, try Audible for free or I don't know, there's some sort of incentive, but it's a, great, it's a great way to get into it. So, anyway, Dylan, thanks, man. Appreciate you. Thank you, Todd. Like, Appreciate subscribe, share, me. DJ Lindsay, everywhere. Awesome. Yeah.